going to kick things off by just discussing what EDR is to, to have that frame of reference for us as before we actually dig into to the specifics of what Huntress does. Okay. So I'm going to kind of be using the NIST cybersecurity framework. I really like it because it, it is pretty simple um, in its layout. So a good place to start evaluating um, building a high quality security stack is to use a framework like NIST. Um, so we've got identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Um, so I'm going to talk about, you know, kind of the questions that each of these answer. But first, just to give a frame of reference of, you know, what would kind of fall underneath each of these categories. Under identify is going to be things like asset management, it's going to be things like compliance. Um, under protect, it's going to be your antivirus, next gen antivirus, MFA, user training, uh, your firewall, and application whitelisting. Detect and respond oftentimes go kind of hand in hand. So um, under detection, it's going to be a SIM, SOAR, honeypots, um, IDS, network behavioral analysis. Um, under respond, it's going to be a SOAR, incident response, forensic analysis. And then recovery is going to be data replication and backups. OK. So to kind of go over the what question you're answering. So with the identification pillar, it's what do we have as an organization and who has access to it? So understanding the environment and who's part of the environment um, so that you can then remove attack vectors. So what happens when somebody gets offboarded? What happens to their credentials and their access? So this is where an idea like least privileged access would kind of come up hmm. so that we can make that attack vector as small as possible. Okay. Um, under protection, how do we stop them, the bad guys, the threat actors from coming in? Um, so information gets inspected when it attempts to move from external sources to internal sources um, and essentially keeping bad things out. So things like phishing emails, bad websites, unauthorized access. And then detection is how do we find them, the bad things. So with protection, nothing's a silver bullet. Things are going to get through. And we know that to be the case because there's always something new. Um, yeah, there is so, no silver bullet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So how, how do we detect those things that get past our protective layers? So what logs are we reviewing? Um, suspicious things are happening and triggering an alert. Who's looking at them? Who's investigating them? Um, and then the response goes hand in hand with that. How do we kick the, those bad actors out and then plug any holes? So um, actions to take in the event that we found some indicators of compromise. And hopefully we found the initial attack vector as well uh, so that we can plug those holes um, and patch or mitigate the incident and then initiate the incident response plan as well. Very nice. Um, yeah, and that kind of goes with the recovery of that, the plugging those holes and, and getting things back to normal. Very nice. So where does EDR fit into that? Um, EDR is an endpoint security solution that detects, investigates, and responds to cyber threats. So if that sounds pretty vague, it's because it is. Um, so at Huntress, we've we've listed out these primary functions of EDR um, to be monitoring and collecting endpoint data. So continuously monitoring and collecting that data, including network and user activity, system events, file changes, um, and actively monitoring those processes across all the endpoints within your organization. Okay. And then taking that info and assembling it for analysis. So um, assembling it into a centralized repository to make it easier for teams to analyze the data and identify potential threats. Um, and then comes the analysis. So most EDR tools are using advanced analytics and leveraging some kind of machine learning to analyze that endpoint data. 
find anomalies and suspicious behavior that could potentially indicate a security threat. From there, the EDR will alert on the findings. So if it's been determined to be a threat, it will provide actionable intelligence that can be used to respond quickly. And then offering some kind of remediation assistance. So um, giving teams the ability to isolate endpoints, uh, contain the threat and remediate the issue. Okay. Um, so with EDR, the team can detect and respond to threats quickly, reducing the risk of a major security breach. So EDRs reduce cyber risk, which is a big reason why more and more cyber insurance is requiring some kind of EDR. Okay, that makes total sense. Yeah. And kind of moving back to NIST, now we can see a little bit better where EDR will fall there. So on that detect and respond, to the right of boom in this situation. So most organizations put the majority of their budgets into the identify, protect, and recover uh, categories. Um, but when a compromise happens, uh, threat actors get into your systems and often remain undetected after passing your protective tools. Um, and so that's exactly where EDR would come into play. So detecting the threats that have bypassed prevention and response and responding to them. Um, Let me so, stop you real quick. Yeah, what please. does NGAV stand for? Yep. That's going to be your next gen antivirus. Oh, okay. I so, got you. Yeah. Traditional we'll AV. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. So as you move to the right on, on something like this, it requires more and more expertise from people to actually assist. So it's really hard for organizations to afford tools, let alone people to manage and maintain them. Um, so th that is a huge challenge. And to talk a little bit more about what exactly is the difference between antivirus and EDR, antivirus is a preventative tool. It's stopping confirmed behavior, malicious behavior, uh, and removing malware from your endpoint. So looking at um, known bad activity um, and known bad indicators of compromise. Um, for EDR, it's looking at that continuous visibility on your endpoints so that you can detect and respond to unknown or suspicious threats. So next-gen antivirus primarily relies on signature-based and behavioral detection to identify and block known threats, while EDR is giving advanced threat detection and response capabilities um, and detecting potential threats in real time. Awesome, now to talk just a little bit more about the, the history uh, of the antivirus EDR space. So while these tools serve a similar purpose in protecting endpoints from cyber threats, there are really big differences. So antivirus solutions are the most basic type of endpoint security solution, scanning files for known threats, comparing them to a database of known malware signatures. Um, so they're really only effective against known threats and may not detect new or advanced threats, which is why we then saw the next gen antivirus, which I think just about every antivirus nowadays is considered to be next gen. Just um, buzzwords, right? Yeah, exactly. The the <laughs> alphabet soup of the industry, definitely. Um, but those next gen antivirus are using some of those advanced technologies like some behavioral analysis, machine learning, talk about another buzzword, um, and AI to detect and block known and some unknown threats. They're more effective than the traditional antivirus, but they still have limitations in detecting and responding to advanced threats. So most traditional AV providers realized more stuff was making it by those detection engines. So they started to adopt these next-gen uh, AV capabilities. So most vendors nowadays fall into this category. Um, okay. So these two are under that protect category of NIST. But okay. even with all those bells and whistles, the market realized that while these tools prevent a lot of threats from getting in, they weren't bulletproof because nothing is. Sure. Um, so 
Uh, machine learning and AI engines are really only as good as the models that they've been trained on. And we aren't quite at that stage where, where AI has become self-aware. Um, so these were built by humans so they can be circumvented by humans. Um, so most endpoint vendors wanted to, to get better central visibility of what's happening on those endpoints at, at any given time to figure out what might have made it past your traditional or next gen AB engine, which is where EDR came into play. So post incident detection, automated response, locally managed, and it's an emerging requirement, especially when it comes to your cyber insurance. So um, with that, EDR tools are really only as good as the humans you have managing them. So along came the managed option to help fill a gap in the detect and respond categories within NIST, um, but they're really expensive, which I'm sure everyone can, can relate to, that being a huge difficulty when it comes to creating a, a solid cybersecurity stack. 